powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, it's Football at Four. Football at Four is powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Jeff Mosher and this man, Adam Kaplan. We like to call him the third member of the NWO as he enters in on a happy hour Friday. We had three doses of Mosh this week, but we got Adam back for happy hour Friday. He wouldn't miss a happy hour Friday. Now, would you, Adam? No, I wouldn't. Uh, no <laughs> doubt. Yeah, You know, the third member, uh, look, it's got to be one of the all-time great wrestling angles. In fact, probably the best one when, when uh, Hulk Hogan shockingly turned heel. I don't know if I told you the story. In 1996, my nephew, Sam, who would wind up being a, later in his career, would, would actually be an MMA promoter for Bellator, Sam Kaplan. And my nephew, John, who's now in his 40s, and John was probably like 12, 11 or 12, and this is how long ago it was. We all got it wrong. We could not get it right. I don't know about you, Mike, if you were watching it then. We, we, I think one of us guessed Sting, but here's the thing, as Eric Bischoff said on his, his podcast, Sting was the backup idea to Hogan if Hogan backed out. Yeah. But no one, none of us got it. We were shocked. It was a great angle. Really yeah, well, and, and well, the late Bobby Heenan had been criticized for, for for kind of giving it away as Hogan was coming down. He had been criticized for the way he did the commentary that night. But that, other than that, it was well pulled off. And I, and when I met Tony Schiavone a couple of years ago at the uh, NFL owners meetings in uh, in in Fort Lauderdale, I think I remember saying to Tony, "I said, Tony, your your line at the end was incredible." Hulk Hogan, you could go straight to hell. I mean, how great was that? Come on. I mean, that, was, that was fantastic. And Tony's still doing it, by the way. Yeah, he's great. Really nice guy. Really enjoyed meeting him. Uh, that, that was interesting. But, yeah, look, it's uh, we're, in, we're in football season, Mike, and uh, OTAs are – they just started last week. Now they're over. I mean, this, this is what we're dealing with now. Yeah, the well, the Eagles OTAs are over. The players mm-hmm. are done until late July, and I guess that is one of the big things is, like, now what? The, the, this is where the teams kind of bite their fingernails for about a month here uh, on letting the players kind of out on their own and, and you know, until the next time they see them. Yeah, 100%, because they really don't want to hear, you know, obviously if the agent calls or law enforcement calls, it's probably not going to be a good conversation, and they're just hoping not to have that. You know, the Eagles over the years and the 20-some-odd years I've covered this team, very rarely if they had an off the field situation happen that was serious uh, that that everyone was aware of. I mean, I know things happen sometimes and things don't get out, but you know they're, they're they're usually pretty high character guys. That's the one thing you could say about the Eagles. You don't hear a lot about. Uh, I'm not saying they're perfect, but you don't hear a lot about guys off the field when they're not around the football team. Yeah, Adam, uh, we got a lot to dive into with these OTAs this week. Let's look at the big comments I guess Sirianni yesterday (laughs) made regarding Quez Watkins. I mean, Watkins obviously has been a guy uh, that they went out and got uh, uh, Zacchaeus to play slot, we think anyway. Quez Watkins kind of, you know, brushed, uh, bristled at it a little bit. like you And Nick Sirianni just came over the top rope yesterday and said, well, Quez knows that you guys have been criticizing him, and I'm not afraid to say some of this stuff. So what was with all the evasive praise uh, of, of Quez Watkins yesterday? Are we expecting big things from Quez? Well, look, if you remember Sirianni last offseason, the 22 offseason, he came out with that quote. I, I may not have it exactly right, but I, I have the I have the g- general gist of it. But Watkins could be the best number two receiver that he's ever coached. Now, I've been a big Sirianni supporter since he's become the head coach. I, I didn't roast him over his first press conference of nationally and locally. He was ridiculed and criticized. I, I just know how it is. got to be careful of criticizing a coach at a press conference. We, we, we evaluate him by how he coaches, not, not what he says at a press conference. Anyway, so this I just thought it was so outrageous what he said last year. I'm like, Quest Watkins is not a bad backup receiver. No one thought he was a number two receiver. I know the guy can run. It's the one one of the few times that I've strongly disagreed with what Sirianni said. Now, to Watkins' defense, he was hurt last season. Watkins revealed that he had a bad shoulder injury. I don't know that he had surgery, but I know he, he said he had a bad shoulder injury. Okay, but that wasn't the entire season. And he, he, he completely fell on his face. He was he struggled. And another thing, Mike, we, we talk about this on our show, which dropped today. We had a we dropped it a day late. Uh, first time we've done that, we dropped it this morning on all of our platforms. We we did discuss this. Mike, he's really not a true slot. He's a vertical guy. And you mentioned OZ, uh, Olamide Sakias. He's a better slot receiver. He can handle the short area stuff. That's not Watkins' forte. So 
to me, he's just been miscast. Why don't you have him be the top backup outside receiver? Because remember now, uh, they they uh, they lost that guy. Not that he was great at doing it, uh, but they lost Zach Pascal. He, he he barely caught the ball, but he technically was their top outside re- backup outside receiver. Well, now Watkins should be that guy. I mean, could could it could it, let's put it this way? Could it be Oz? Yeah, because he's been a starter, but he's not. He's only five nine. And you like that Watkins runs better. He's a little bit bigger physically. So one of those two guys will be the top back outside receiver and will also play in the slot. But I think what's what's happened clearly here is as much as Sirianni's not willing to admit it, Quez Watkins is, was miscast last season. Yeah, well, I will say this, Adam, just to kind of further the conversation, which is uh, – Watkins had some inconsistencies. It's not like it's, you know, hey, he got very small amount of reps and made the most of them. No, and he got some opportunities to make play the Super Bowl. Um, he didn't come through all the time. I mean, he had the fumble in the game against Washington. I mean, there are some big moments in this in, in the season where he had a chance to kind of separate himself and secure his position. He didn't take advantage of him, so he shouldn't be taking it as a criticism more so. Hey, I had opportunities, and I didn't make the most of them. They brought in competition, and I need to get better. Yeah, I know, Mike, Eagles over the years, and I talked to Joe Banner about this when uh, he was on our show last fall, Joe said they really like players on the final year of their deal. They had a little bit of extra motivation. And look, Watkins is now on the final year of his rookie deal. This is a big year for him because if he could just be productive in whatever role he has, that'll show in free agency because the guy can run. It's not like he's old. We know we had outlined this, uh, gosh, going back three years ago about his immaturity. But they, they had no off-the-field problems with him at all in years. And it was he never got in trouble, but just he needed to mature a little bit. And – the, the conduct's been better, and look, he, he's got a lot to prove. You're right. It's a big year for him. This is this will be one of the training camp battles, Zacchaeus versus Quez Watkins for that number three role. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And, and, and as we've kind of chronicled a little bit, Adam, I don't know if you look at OTAs and see if anybody jumped off the page, but they don't have a whole heck of a lot of – depth after that right i mean we talked about it if brown and 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 uh smith if somebody got hurt they don't have a whole heck of a lot of uh, outside talent so that's where watkins could really have a big role yeah and that was what i was talking about earlier mike and you just mentioned the two players if brown and smith gets hurt now zacchaeus has technically been a starter i know in atlanta they didn't throw the ball much but he played he played starter snaps at, at various points of his career he's also on a one-year deal has a lot to prove and, and you look at the Watkins situation, so that situation will work itself out. But you mentioned the depth. I mean, Greg Ward's only a slot. This is his on and off sixth year with the team. It's incredible. Then you got not a Hasselwood Rambo, not a Hasselwood or undrafted free agents. Covey's only a slot. He never he really didn't play the slot last season. That was a little bit of a surprise. And Tyree Cleveland is a former draftee of the Broncos, who was a seventh rounder at the University of Florida. Brian Johnson, I'm sure, knows, but who's their Eagles new OC. But they don't have anything. Uh, these guys haven't proven anything. So you're right. No, it, it's a it's a fair point because if you if OTAs are over now, so what are the problem spots? Depth at inside linebacker, depth at uh, backup outside receiver. Slot they're 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 okay at slot. Zacchaeus and Watkins can do it. Smith has played inside. I, I don't. It's not a, and again, Covey. If he could just if he could just carry over the the OTA performance and actually carry it into training camp, he may get some snaps at slots. So it's not a really big deal. But I also, uh, inside linebacker is definitely a problem. And safety, they have numbers, but none of them are proven. I mean, Edmonds has been a disappointment as a former first-round pick. Blankenship could certainly be a good third safety. Brown's a rookie. Wallace is a backup safety special teamer. Evans, jo- uh, Justin Edmonds is here, but what is he as a player? And Tristan McCollum is a guy who's got length but has never played in the NFL. Yeah, uh, good stuff from Adam Kaplan. Football at four here from InsideTheBirds.com. The new Inside the Birds podcast, it dropped today on all – podcasting platforms you and jeff had a little fun exercise uh earlier in this week we talked to jeff about his roster you went with an all nfc east offense and how many eagles and uh players do we <laughs> see land uh on your squad on this all nfc east offense all right so a couple things here so jeff came up with this idea and literally 10 seconds as i said i'm in this is the, like the greatest idea we we've ever had either you or i, I said dude this is like the best and as we both correctly predicted the 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 response has been overwhelming emails, although they don't like the way we, dra- they wanted us to do a snake draft for two people. <laughs> so, which means, okay, if you draft first, I draft second. And then the next round I draft first. So basically I, you pick first, but I pick twice, kind of like a fancy draft, but yeah. 
and these are good suggestions, but we took more as an NFL draft because you know you don't you don't you don't do a snake in an NFL draft. Whoever picks first picks first in every round unless they trade the pick. So that's that's the way, that's that's really the way we did it. Now offensively, what what we did was Mike in, in that in, in the one that we did earlier this week for Monday, um, you know that was our first draft. And it, again, I, what I did what I did in that draft, and you could see that that was earlier this week. You could well, I know we on InsideTheBirds.com, Mike. You could anyone could go there and read the uh, read the write up as uh, our, uh, someone wrote it up for us, which is great. But the defensive one, I, I loved it. I, although I think my, I think my team on offense was a little better. Um, and I'll, I'll get into kind of what I would have done if we could just pick a uh, pick a roster overall without doing a draft. I'll do that in a second. But defensively, it was Mike. I, I thought I did well, but he Jeff dominated my team on defense. I, I, he, <laughs> he on defensive line, I did well with Dexter Lawrence and Jerron Payne. But if you hear Jeff's front four, it's just it's like an all star team. Of, and, and and by the way. It's the NFC East only, but it might be one of the better front fours you could put together. Jeff just did a great job there. Now, because he went with Micah Parsons first, I had to go Reddick second. I don't think I had a choice. And then I wound up getting Tank Lawrence. He got Josh Sweat for me. I really wanted him to be my my second defensive end. And we're in that draft, in the defensive draft, which we did for today, you're allowed to start two stand up outside linebackers, or you, you can only have two edge rushers. It depends how you want to do it. But what I did was, Mike, I did a three defensive tackle alignment. Why? Because the Eagles, you, Jeff said we could do it for this draft. You know, the Eagles, every single game last season started three defensive tackles. It didn't mean they all played a lot, but that's what they did. So I went with that. I went with Jalen Carter fairly early, Mike. I'm, mm. I'm of the belief, based on our, our information, based on what we've been told, right, that he's got a real shot. Now, this is me speaking this part, but I'm going to explain why I'm saying this. Everything we've heard about him is good. If he stays on the straight now or off the field, He's got a real shot to be defensive rookie of the year. I know it's a little bit bold, but the guy, the guy's tenth pick overall. Yeah, well, I would, the most talented player of this draft. I wouldn't say that it would be bold. I would think that it would be hopeful, considering many people thought if he didn't get into some trouble, that he may have been in play for the first player non quarterback picked. Right, hundred percent. Yeah, I agree with that. But you no, know, people thought it was bold because do you trust him off the field? That's the thing. It's like it, he – I don't think he's going to be feast or famine so much. It's can he grow up, Mike, in a quick period because he – and you heard his probably his comment when uh, I think they went to him a, after they picked him. I, I forget whether it was on ESPN or NFL Network where he said, you know, he thanked the Eagles and they're not going to regret it. They just is very, He was very thankful mm-hmm. for them drafting him. And, look, the, the Eagles are they're taking a risk here because of that major off-the-field issue. But I, I know talking to – Personal sources. I, this is where I use it on our show. The one, one of the guys I trusted, man, he's a next Adamican Sue. He's a bully in a good way. He's built very similarly. He's got better than average pass rush skills. And it, this could be very interesting with this guy. And I, I really believe he's got a chance to even be a breakout player as a rookie. Yeah. We, we all, um, you know, we, Jeff and I, the conversation when we were talking about the, the, the defense earlier this week and Carter, you know, you got Fletcher Cox, Jordan Davis, and Jalen Carter. Is that crew going to be able to be better than Fletcher Cox, Linval Joseph, and, and Javon Hargrave? And that might really be a big question with this Eagles defense this season. Well, Jordan Davis has got to obviously play a lot, a minimum of 40% of the snaps, but I would think more if he's healthy. He made small progress before the uh, high ankle sprain. But the big thing is we we put out a couple months ago, he real diligent in his workouts, was in there when he was allowed in the building in February, March, more March than February, but March, April, May. He looks great. He, he's got a great attitude, Jordan Davis does. And look, I, I've kind of, I'm like, I, here's what I would say. I, I said I was, I forget the word. I I, I use, um, but I was, I, I was, I said I've been optimistic, but I never go like super optimistic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I went from cautiously optimistic to now I would call it reasonably optimistic is probably my upgrade on him. But the thing is, being in good physical shape does not mean you're in great condition. In the heat in in, in Philly, down at the Novacare complex, in late July and early August, when it's high 80s and early 90s, Mike, you know what it's like in this area? Everyone listening does. Oh, yeah. You got to be able to stand it. And he couldn't handle the heat last year. So we'll see. Yeah, uh, Christian Ellis has been a big name. Uh, You have any uh, nuggets on on Christian Ellis? It's legitimate. I don't see what we said on today's show. You have to be careful with what's out there. Reporters only see two practices, and they only want seven on sevens mostly. 
There's no 11 on 11. So you have to be careful. Those are passing drills. So yeah, you're going to have a chance to get your hands on balls. And it's great that he had, what, three picks. But as it was explaining to me privately, Mike, it's very rare for a guy hit his size. He's much bigger than you think. He moves really well. In fact, I said on today's show, I, I want to find out what, why wasn't he drafted? Because Mike, he put together good defensive tape when he was allowed to play defense late last season. He looked good. We know he became, once they put him on, on special teams, one of the better special teams players. So, you know, the Eagles don't like to spend money on the inside linebacker. They didn't try to, to resign uh, TJ Edwards. So overall, Mike, this kid absolutely could push Nick Mora. I'd be very surprised if he doesn't. I'm not saying he's going to win it. We're not there yet. We don't, we're, again, these are only OTAs. And if I've learned anything in over 20 years, you have to be careful about offseason hype. And they, they only had six practices. You, you, and again, a lot of guys were not working all the time. So, you, but he definitely was in there with some good players, and uh, we'll see what happens. But that, you know, that to me, they may not call it a training camp battle, but I'm going to call it one because Morrow's new to this defense in terms of the Eagles, but he's not new to it in, in scheme because he was in it in Chicago with the Bears. Right. Well, and, and Adam, we'll leave you on this. You know, we talk about OTAs coming to a close, and what do they really mean? This is one of the things where you see a guy perform in OTAs that now you say, all right, I want to see more from this guy when we get to training camp. You did enough in this element that I want to see more from you when we get to the next element. So I would I would liken this to what you said as the offseason is double-A baseball. You as a baseball guy can relate to this. I've always said that, Training camp in the preseason, particularly training camp, is triple-A baseball. But can they hit the fastball in, in, in what I call the major leagues in the regular season? And it always separates because I you know, I travel the, the, the country for training camps, and I've seen a lot. You're not always going to be right with what you see. But when you talk to personnel people, it's always you, you got to find out what happens. What does the practice tape look like? What happens when reporters aren't there? Because we don't have access. Our eyes can't see everything. I don't care what any reporter says. You can't see every play of practice it's impossible. Because you're not looking for it. You don't know. And plus, some guys really don't know the game. They don't know what they're looking at. They think they do. But you would have to ask yourself, well, wh- who, what are they really seeing? And I, 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 if I've learned anything, seven on seven, you've got to be careful. But you do look for traits. Can the guy move? When you're talking about Ellis, yes, he can move. But can he put it together in training camp? That, that's the question. Adam Kaplan and the guys have a new podcast out. It dropped this morning over at Inside the Birds Platforms. Check that out. And, of course, football at four right here on the Sports Bash Live on 97.3 ESPN. Happy hour Friday to you, Adam. Thanks, bud. Thanks, man.